Hello and welcome back to Bucket Ponds. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Today we are building a beautiful sealed ecosphere. Here's a project preview to let you know what you'll see later on in the video. Uh, but let's start right here with a clean jar, a one quart mason jar with a nice lid. Uh, I love these, they are excellent uh, sizes for an ecosphere. I believe that one quart is about the minimum size that you need to build a sealed jar aquarium. And we built four of these last year. And you know, today I want to improve on those designs. In a recent video, I did an update on those four tanks in the background. And we got a good idea of what works and what doesn't work. You know, where we can improve and uh, things we need to work on for future builds. So that's what we're doing today. We are building an improved ecosphere using what we learned from those other projects. I've started with a bit of black cow compost mixed with some soil from the uh, oasis. Now I'm adding some sand from my backyard. If you're building one of these at home, uh, it's helpful to have a spoon or a little spatula. I like these little shovels personally. But you can almost call this a Wallstad style project, almost. Uh, we have uh, some compost under sand, and uh, that's a very basic idea of what a Wallstad project might be. Uh, Hallie suggests that you read her book, uh, The Ecology of the Planted Aquarium by Diana Wallstad. And you can get a better idea, better than I can explain here on this video. Uh, but we're going to keep things really simple. So we have compost under sand, and now we're going to add some water. Now I want to show you what not to do. If you dump your water in here, you will completely destroy your aquascape. And that's no good. Uh, you're going to have to add the water very, very carefully. And uh, to do that, I'm going to use my little shovel to channel the water towards the front of the jar. And that's for a good reason. You see, I, I stuck the compost towards the back of the jar. It's helpful to decide which side is the front and which is the back. And uh, now we're going to create a small incline. I want the, the substrate, the sand, I want it to get higher towards the back of the jar. That will do a few different things that will help us. It will add the illusion of depth when viewed from the front. And it will also allow us to easily view the full substrate without having to, you know, look up and down and to change our viewing angle. So there you go. I've added some live aquarium water from the Guppy Paradise fish tank that you may have seen on the channel. Uh, I love that tank. It's actually very nice, even after the hurricane. <laughs> after the long-term power outage, it survived, mostly. A lot of people didn't like that video, didn't like that aquarium, so yeah, I'll have to do an update on that soon just to prove them wrong. <laughs> but uh, I'm very excited to show you this, you guys. I'm going to take some plants from this old project here. And this is one of my oldest spike rush nurseries. In a recent video, I showed you a new one that we built together. And uh, here's what one of my oldest spike rush tanks looks like. It's absolutely crazy inside. It's very dark in there, but not because of uh, dirt or anything. It's just pure plants. It is so full of spike rush <laughs> that barely any light gets in there. So that's really crazy. And just look at it when I take the lid off. Spike Rush is absolutely busting out of this aquarium. I have to have a lid on it or this stuff will be everywhere. And we know from our uh, tanks that we built last year that Spike Rush will do well in a sealed ecosystem. I believe I made a mistake by not planting it more heavily in those previous projects. So I'm going to plant it pretty heavily here using our large tweezers and our large scissors. And uh, if you have small hands, you might not need uh, tools like this for your jar aquascaping needs, but I have very large hands and I need these little tools. So here's a great look at a single spike rush plant. It's a little knot <laughs> with uh, these little green leaves coming out of it. Those are basically leaves and uh, it does have little roots that come out of those knots as well. And every so often one of those little pine needle like leaves will go off to sprout another spike rush plant and it will clone itself basically. I can't get this stuff to flower but it does replicate you know through cloning very well. It's also very easy to make cuttings. You can just really take a, a chunk off of this top of this tank and uh, put it right into my aquarium. It'll grow just fine. So I'm taking about 10 spike rush plants here and we're gonna put them in our new ecosphere. Uh, for now I'm going to uh, put this tank away just going to kind of tuck the spike rush down in there, and uh, it'll be fine, you guys. It is a super durable plant, incredibly hardy, very hard to kill, 
and as long as it has water it tends to survive so trust me I'm not gonna hurt it I'm just gonna tuck it back in there I've been growing this stuff for a few years now it was one of our first plants actually that we found in a wild bog mat <laughs> off in uh, the woods of southern Georgia so it's good stuff and now we're going to plant our new jar aquarium I'm very excited to show you my old tank there uh, a few of you guys seem curious about that stuff so I'm trying to be more open and uh, just share more things with you uh, but depending on your mentality your attitude planting will either be the most fun or the most most uh, frustrating personally I love it I love planting these jars it's one of the best parts of the project and here we are I planted them into fast forward <laughs> so I wouldn't waste your time uh, but here it is we have a ton of spike rush in here to start with all those green strings you see there and now we're going to add some life to this project. We have our handy injector here, and inside of this little container, we have uh, paramecium, our free-swimming detritus worms, as well as some mulm and some stuff that got sucked up in here. I'm hoping that adding these samples along with our live aquarium water will help to bring beneficial bacteria into the project, and of course, seed it with uh, detritus worms, paramecium, and other pets. In this uh, separate injection, I have some ostracods. These are the larger ostracod species that I talk about sometimes. We found them last year. They kind of came to us. It's a long story. But we saw in the recent update video that our smaller ostracods did survive in the sealed aquariums for over a year. And these bigger guys, they reproduce more quickly. Uh, they're, they're more dominant. They're, they're more aggressive, you could say. Uh, but I believe they're more successful as well. So hopefully they'll do even better in this uh, new sealed project. My goal is to have a very large population of ostracods in a sealed aquarium. And I think that we can do that. So now I'm going to add some water spangles in here as well. And uh, some duckweed and a little bit of water meal. So these spangles we got recently from a wild collection trip. You can find the video on the channel. I visited a little park near a lake, and we happened to find them in there. Unfortunately, that small park was completely destroyed by Hurricane Helene. I don't think we can get down in there anymore, and I may have been the last visitor, so that's interesting. Uh, but in this project, I am hopeful that we can establish a very long-term successful aquarium. Some of these plants might not survive. The spangles, I've never tried them in a sealed jar. They may fail. But if they do, they'll become a food source for our animals inside, our, uh, our uh, tiny ostracods and paramecium, our detritus worms, and even some bladder snails. Yes, there are some bladder snails in here, some babies, and we'll see them in a moment. I absolutely love building these sealed projects, you guys. And, uh, you know, you might think it's cruel or, uh, you know, not, not cool, <laughs> but... I'm working with ostracods, I'm working with tiny little crustaceans, tiny little worms, uh, nano species you might say. I'm going to add some more compost here, just a pinch to sit down on the substrate. It might make things a little messy, but this will act as an initial food source for our pets in the project, and that's very important. We have to wait for algae and bacteria to really get established in this jar before our pets can sustain themselves off of what grows within the uh, closed aquarium. So we have to add some food to start with. I like to uh, vary that a bit and add a few different things. We're going to fast forward to six hours later. And the tank is looking pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit of marble and some seashells to this project as well. Here's one of my shells. Uh, now, in my previous builds, you guys, I have added marble for a few reasons, mainly to help balance our pH. If the water becomes very acidic from that compost, the marble will slowly dissolve a little bit of it, and that will help to change the pH back towards uh, 6.8 or 7. And uh, we're going to continue that, but I also thought that our snails and our crustaceans would be able to use the calcium from that marble. But I don't think that that's necessarily how it works. That's calcium bicarbonate, if I remember correctly. And I think that these seashells are calcium carbonate, which our animals should be able to make use of. Plus, it won't hurt to add a little bit of interesting uh, 
hardscape to this project. I think these seashells are perfect for that. I've also noticed that our ostracods are very much attracted to these seashells. It's very interesting. Um, it could be because they're a bright white color and the ostracods are photo attractive. They go to light, you know, they see that bright white reflection and they are drawn to it. Or they might be interested in something that is uh, in or on the shell, which is calcium. So that's my theory. And also I'm inspired by a company called Ecosphere Associates that's no longer in business. Uh, but in their sealed projects, they did include a little bit of calcium in the form of coral. Uh, dead coral, I believe. Which is made of a very similar material as these seashells. So that should work out well. My first time using some shells in a sealed project. But I'm also going to add some hornwort here. Now, I've been wanting to use hornwort in a sealed project for a long time. I just haven't gotten around to it. In this tank, I don't think it will succeed. It will most likely fail. Uh, but who knows, it might flourish. It might go really well in here. And we might have found our best sealed aquarium plant. Uh, but for now, this is just a test run. I mostly expect the spike rush and the duckweed to succeed in here. But in these projects, I do like to include some backup plants just in case things don't work out. Uh, I want to make sure that our pets can breathe. <laughs> and uh, these plants are very important for that. They will filter the air and the water to keep things uh, sustainable for life inside of the jar. I'm adding a little bit of pumpkin here. That orange stuff is pumpkin guts that I saved from my Halloween jack-o'-lantern. I froze it, actually. And uh, that's just a little bit of pumpkin material from inside of the pumpkin. It might make a mess. I'm not sure. I've never tried pumpkin material in our tanks before as a food source, but we'll wait and see. Here you can find a few of the ostracods moving around, and keep in mind that this is just a starter population. Uh, maybe a dozen ostracods to start with. And up here we have our hornwort, we have our pumpkin stuff, and we have a few of our baby bladder snails. Yeah. So I was counting on this, you guys. I did not add them specifically. They came in as hitchhikers on some of the plants. If you suddenly have uh, bladder snails in your aquarium, that's most likely how they got in there. Uh, but I love hitchhikers, and this is what I wanted. I, I wanted to get them seeded in this tank as well. Now, in our jars from last year, we did find a few bladder snails, just a couple of them, very small. And I believe that they were uh, stunted, you know, through a lack of food or a lack of oxygen in the water. Who knows? But we can find out. So I'm hoping that this project, which is overplanted, will help to create a better environment to sustain a small population of bladder snails. <laughs> you can see what I mean here about the ostracods being attracted to the shell. Uh, it's not all the way against the glass. They can get uh, around it if they want to. They might kind of get stuck a little bit, but uh, they can get out of here. No problem. But they're definitely attracted to it. They want to be near the shell. They want to be on it. And I think that that's uh, pretty interesting. So we'll have to wait and see if adding these shells really help uh, to encourage our ostracods to live longer, healthier lives. As well as our bladder snails, of course. A lot of you guys may be saying, like, why would you put worms and, and snails and pests in your jar aquarium like this? And, you know, I, I don't think that they are pests. I think they are very useful. I think that we can find a way to work with them in a happy middle ground, you know. And in a project like this, they are the stars of this ecosphere, you know. I'm not going to put fish in here, never, um, nothing like that. Uh, the biggest thing that I'll add in a sealed project like this is a bladder snail. So that's my, my line of thought, you know, I want to build a nice, sustainable, closed jar aquarium that can last for maybe five, maybe 10 years if we're lucky, but it's a very difficult uh, challenge to balance the initial amount of fertilizer that you add versus the conditions of the aquarium to keep things, uh, you know, uh, survivable, sustainable. So that's part of the fun that I enjoy, you know. I, I'm not one of those YouTubers that goes out and gets a scoop of pond water and, like, puts a lid on it. That's cool and all. You know, I don't hate it. <laughs> I love everybody. But personally, I like to build these, like, assembling a, a super organism. You know, the plants, those are the lungs. Uh, the worms and the snails, those are the, the, uh, the intestines, the digestion system. 
So this is Ecosphere number five. Setup went perfectly. It's beautiful. I hope that it maintains this beauty and develops very nicely in the future. I'll be building number six very soon. And I will, of course, do an update on this tank in the near future and another update in about a year from now, roughly. Don't let the name fool you. Uh, this is Ecosphere number five, but I have built way more than five of these closed jar aquariums. I've built maybe 20 or 25 of them. It's just so much easier to give them a number instead of a name. Uh, it's easier to keep track of and whatnot. If you haven't seen the update video on tanks that I built last year, it's on the top of your screen right now. Please check it out to understand the improvements that I made with this build. Thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. I moved the shoutouts to the front of the video because I want you guys to get more attention. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment. If you hated the video, leave a comment too. Why not?